While OpenAI CEO claims their models think like PhDs, their own researchers are fleeing to meta in droves. While Google builds AI that advertises to other AI, laid off programmers can't pay their mortgages. Today we're exposing the massive gap between what tech bros say artificial intelligence can do and the dystopian reality they're actually building. A gap that's so wide you could park Mark Zuckerberg's nuclear reactor in it. Exhibit A in Consultant Fiction, Pythagoras Vibe Coding Nonsense. They claim their system understands your organization's vibe and generates code matching your corporate's culture. Tell the AI, make this feel more like us and groovy cool, dude. Code that embodies your company. The reality? GitHub's data shows 87% of developers extensively rewrite AI-generated code. Carnegie Mellon found programmers using AI took longer than those coding by hand because they spent so much time fixing bugs and hallucinations. And while American tech brethren promise digital mood rings by Christmas, Japan's National Institute focuses on hybrid classical AI, augmenting humans rather than replacing them. Their director put it perfectly. We're not building systems to replace humans. We're building systems that make humans more effective at what they already do well. American consultants sell AI that does everything. Actual builders in Japan create systems that do specific things reliably with humans firmly in control. PepsiCo and Salesforce's Agent Force wins the buzzword bingo championship for the week, for sure. Their per press release read, it leverages agent agentic mesh infrastructure to facilitate autonomous revenue optimization through quantum semantic understanding of customer journeys. Translation, after reading the technical docs, it's a chatbot that searches their CRM and summarizes customer info. No autonomous agents, no quantum anything, no semantic understanding crap at all. Classic consultant fiction, wrap existing technology in future-sounding buzzwords and sell it as revolutionary, while the developers struggle to make a chatbot that doesn't think it dated your mom in high school. Verizon's recent correction might be the funniest. After months marketing their fully autonomous digital agents, they admitted customer chatbots are just actually human types, us human types. The truth came out when customers shared recordings of these AI agents Sighing in frustration, struggling with basic policies, yelling at their kids and their dog, and putting people on hold to consult their supervisor. When non-functioning fiction collides with customer reality, companies choose admit the technology doesn't work or hire humans to pretend it does. <laughs> Verizon chose the latter until they got caught. While consultants sell clean green AI, the physical reality gets messier by the day. Amazon's Project Rainier sprawls across 1,200 acres of farmland. Industry projections call for $1.7 trillion in infrastructure investment by 2035. Data centers already consume more electricity than Poland, with billions in associated health costs from pollution. The dirty secret? AI requires physical infrastructure on a scale that's becoming unsustainable. LinkedIn influencer, influencers talk frictionless digital transformation while builders desperately secure electricity, water, and chips to keep their systems running. Google's latest desperate move takes the cake, ads specifically targeted at AI bots. They're building a protocol called Agent-to-Agent, -Agent, where AI systems advertise to other AI systems. The trillion-dollar giant built on selling human attention now prepares for a world where humans get removed entirely. Google frantically tries to preserve its advertising monopoly while CEOs fire human workers in favor of AI, creating a technological capitalism endgame, machines selling to machines while humans struggle to afford groceries. I wonder if those agents will as get as tired of hearing about sky dizzy as I have while watching a bunch of people wearing hats march through the street playing instruments. Sick of all that stuff. Maybe the AI, AI agents, maybe that's a way if they take over the world, we can just start playing those commercials and they'll die of boredom, maybe. I don't know. The geopolitical AI landscape reveals another layer of deception. China's Baudu open sources Ernie, while Germany demands Apple and Google ban DeepSeek for sending user data to China. Who would have thought that? Notice the strategy? Chinese AI products launch with friendly English names like Ernie and DeepSeek. 
designed to sound approachable to Western users. Give your surveillance tool a name that sounds like a Sesame Street character and people happily feed it their data. So get ready for espionage Elmo at fine retailers everywhere. Western governments sound alarms about data exfiltration while millions upload their personal information to these systems, all because an app has a friendly English name that feels familiar rather than foreign. Look, kids, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a Superman spy balloon. Meta's $14.8 billion investment in scale AI reveals how tech giants use non-acquisition acquisitions to avoid regulatory scrutiny. On paper, Meta bought a 49% non-voting stake. In reality, they took Scale's data pipeline, hired away their founder and key staff, and created contracts that embed Scale within Meta's infrastructure. One analysis compared it to medieval masons moving a a cathedral brick, brick by brick, technically in a new location, but functionally the same structure. Microsoft with OpenAI, Amazon and Google with Anthropic, They're all following Rockefeller's Standard Oil playbook from the 1880s using silent partnerships and informal arrangements rather than outright ownership. Even the builders disagree about what's possible. Mira Marotti left OpenAI to start Thinking Machines Lab, rejecting the one-model-rules-them-all approach for specialized AI addressing specific business problems. Meanwhile, Sam Altman claims his systems are on par with a human with a Ph.D., and seems genuinely confused about why society doesn't look way more different already. (laughs) I know I keep using that a lot, but I love that. I use it during the day. Wow, that looks way more different. I'm old and boring and bored. Nobody knows what's coming next, but they're all hedging their bets. Some question whether current approaches will lead to AGI and pivot to specialized applications. Others claim breakthroughs are just around the corner while frantically searching exclusive access to talent, data, and compute. A whole industry of digital profits sells courses on technologies that barely even function. Their formula? Ominous year marker plus vague technological threat plus impressive sounding numbers plus urgent call to action equals $500 to $1,000 course sales. The perfect contradiction? Trillion-dollar companies struggle to make chatbox less stupid while content creators claim these systems will achieve superhuman intelligence by next Tuesday. The panic mechanics profit most when AI doesn't work as promised. The longer the gap between hype and reality, the more crap they can sell on preparing for a future that keeps getting postponed. The trillion-dollar question, will AI ever develop meaningful benefits to ordinary people before public opposition shuts it down? Only 17% of Americans believe AI will positively impact society over the next two decades. That's, a, that's deeper than just skepticism. It's existential distrust. In New Braunfels, Texas, New Braunfels, sorry, New Braunfellers, if I pronounced that wrong, residents watch their community transformed by data centers that offer them nothing in return. Irvine, California, laid off game developers. They're not seeing the AI productivity dividend. They're seeing unemployment lines. The consultant fiction, AI benefits will trickle down to everyone. The builder reality, current applications primarily help corporations cut costs by eliminating jobs. We've built systems that write essays, generate images, and analyze data sets, but can't figure out how to make them actually improve people's lives in ways they can feel. That's AI in 2025. Tremendous potential buried under mountains of hype, fear, and nonsense. Until the gap between consultant fiction and builder reality closes, the digital extinction we document might not be of jobs or industries, but of AI itself. I'll see you next time.